Welcome to Beyond the Pod, presented by SodaStick.com. Brunette, he moves, Brunette back in, he scores! Minnesota has upset the Colorado Avalanche! Andrew Brunette, the game-winning goal! Here are your hosts, the second greatest scorer in Gopher hockey history, Pat Micheletti. And the second greatest hockey analyst on this podcast, Brandon Molesky. Hey, welcome to another episode of Beyond the Pod. I am Brandon Molesky, that second greatest Golden Gopher, in, at least from a scoring standpoint in the history of the program. Pat Micheletti joins me. And uh, Pat, Labor Day weekend's over. That means we're entering hockey season. We are, Brandon. Um, the college season is, what, three and a half weeks away. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it's that time of year. It's getting a little cooler outside. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, so we started looking ahead to the college hockey season. We're now joined by the assistant coach for the Minnesota Golden Gophers men's hockey team, Garrett Raboyne. Garrett, thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate it. Uh, I want to talk about the fun stuff for most of this podcast, but I think we should start off with, uh, you know, obviously the elephant in the room that uh, Bob Motzko, his son, passed away this 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 uh, this summer. Uh, from your standpoint, and the coaching st- standpoint, I mean, uh, how how difficult has this summer and off season been? And uh, I mean. I, I don't even know how to ask the question. I mean, what, what, what's been kind of your process and what, what's, what's been kind of your guys' focus this summer? Well, I think it has. It's been a really tough month for, for our program and especially the Motskos. And, um, you know, we, we're just – we're hoping to move forward, but we're rallying around Bob, uh, Shelly, Ella, and Bo, and, and, you know, just hugging them tight, telling them we love them. Um, but, you know what, he's been incredible. He's still uh, – He's still a leader of our group. He's operating at an extremely high level, uh, and we're lucky lucky to have him here at the University of Minnesota. Yeah, it, it's got to be comforting for him to be around, you know, people who love him. You know, everybody in the hockey community. Um, I mean, the outpouring at, at the funeral was was mind boggling. Um, but just to just to have, you know, friends like you. Uh, you know, you work for him, but you guys are very tight. Um, I mean, that, 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 that's got to be helpful to him. I think, you know, and you hit it with the, just the support, uh, not only, you know, within the hockey community, but just everyone who follows go for hockey or who's come into contact with Mac or Bob, uh, just the celebration up in St. Cloud. It was, it was absolutely incredible. And it just shows you how much bigger this is than hockey. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, words can't really describe uh, what that was all like. Uh, so what what have you guys been doing this offseason then? Obviously, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to focus on hockey with all that going on. But from a pure hockey standpoint, uh, I'm sure someone like you, you still have somewhat of a job to do. What, what's been what's been your process uh, throughout this last couple of weeks and you know month or two? We're just getting prepared. We're getting ready to go for the uh, the season upcoming. And, and it's one we're really excited about. Um you know, and, and we haven't had our first official practice. Uh, August typically is is a slow month as a college hockey coach, um, and our guys are around. They're they're skating almost every day in kind of a captain's type practice. But uh, that's really it. We're getting organized uh, now. It's all starting. You get the uh, the junior hockey seasons are starting up. Elite league, midget hockey. So that all gets rolling, and then uh, and then. This upcoming Monday, we'll skate on the ice as a team for the first time. You don't win championships on paper. But if you look at your lineup and the guys coming in and the guys coming back, uh, your goaltender coming back, um, it looks pretty impressive. Yeah, we're excited. Like I keep saying, we are excited about this group, but there's a lot of college hockey teams excited about their group at this right. time of year. You know, right. everyone's undefeated and, uh, you know, they haven't had to have really any of those tough conversations. Um, but I think, you know, with the leadership we have coming back, uh, LaFontaine, Myers, uh, Walker, we're, we're fired up. And it goes well beyond those guys, as you know. Uh, right. Just uh, It's fun to see, though. Two years ago, we're, we're the youngest team in college hockey, and now – that's flipped and we finally have a group that's uh that's been through the battles uh as tough as it was to go through losing to Mankato down in Colorado last year I think it's uh it's one of those scars that uh you know in college hockey aren't bad to have um and you know like it's Frank Saratori always says that you can't buy experience you can't put a price tag on it and we finally have that experience 
Yeah, and 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 that's what I want. You know, let, let's let's talk about that a little bit. Um, I look at your team, and I see the strength of your team being your D. Okay, uh, with Favor, Kester, Lacombe, uh, Brinkman. Who am I missing? Ryan Johnson. Um, that's pretty impressive. But you know, w- when you when you look at it. And, you know, I see a guy like Sammy Walker. I see a guy like McLaughlin. And then I look at guys like Chaz Lucius coming in, Nye's coming in. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's really important, in my opinion, that guys in that upper class, the Myers, Walkers, McLaughlins, I mean, those guys are going to have to, they're going to have to carry the load in terms of, you know what, been there, done that, it's time to, really take that next step. Would you agree? I agree. And that, and, you know, we talk about as a staff all the time, you know, the, the great teams are player led. And this is, yeah. this is a group where they're, uh, they're carrying the mail. They're going to do all the heavy lifting. And this is a player led team. Garrett, I know, you know, coaches tend to worry a bit. And as, as Pat said on paper, right, you've got one of the best goalies in the nation coming back. The blue line uh, was great last year, and they were young while they were great last year. And now they, they've got some experience. You've got the star power. You got the transfer from Colorado College. W- what worries you at this stage about this team in terms of what, what what concerns do you have? Because on paper, as Pat said, it looks pretty good. It's just the unforeseen. You know, we're we're sitting here right now, and we do we have depth at all three positions, and uh, we'll see how it plays out. There's an ebb and flow to every season, and uh, we're just looking forward to, to navigating it. Okay, let's let's go back to that Mankato game uh, from from a year ago. Um, do you do you go back and look at it and say, man, if we would have done this or if we could have done this? Do you think your team got frustrated in that game and just you know, and 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 Minnesota State was like, okay, the clock's rolling, the clock's rolling. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're holding them back at the end of the game. You got a little bit more fight, but what, what transpired in that game or didn't transpire for, for you guys to win? Yeah. You know, I think the last time I talked to you guys was down in, uh, Loveland before we played Omaha and, and everything went right in that game. And we, we felt great about, uh, our group heading into the next game and, right. Uh, you know, I listened to the podcast with Mike Hastings a couple of weeks ago, and he said the difference for them was just a, a tip against St. Cloud. I think it was different for us. Like it was, uh, you know, to, to what you're saying, Pat, I think it was a sense of frustration. It was, you know, having not been there yeah. um, and fully understanding what games are like, the magnitude uh, at that time of the year, I think I think we tightened up and, and we got away from our type of hockey. You know, yeah. we we uh, we started to spread out. We wanted to make everything a stretch pass. We wanted to get back in the game in, in just one play. We wanted to make the big play. Yeah. Uh, where we where we were successful in the Big Ten tournament, uh, if you can remember, is we just oh. grinded those games down. Yeah. Um, and it took beyond sixty minutes in those first two games, and and that's a team we wanted to see. I think that I think that's the team uh, we needed in that game, and. Um, and it's in our group, you know, we just like, I think, uh, as I said earlier, I think it was really good for us to go through it. Um, and now we know. Yeah. You talk about the, uh, the big 10 Garrett, and it was a little difficult last year to determine which conferences were stronger than others, just based off of, you know, the weird schedule last year. Uh, but it appears, you know, obviously Michigan with, with the, the three top five draft picks returning to school there and in, in, in the talent they have, it seems like the conference, at least last year, elevated itself a little bit do you, do you guys feel like the conference is in a good spot and and who do you look at as your biggest competition this year we do we do we think it's in a great spot and it says a lot with uh high profile draft picks uh going to college hockey you know the it's translating uh more than it ever has in the success yeah. at the national hockey league level um we do we have a lot of young talented players in our league but i think we also have those older free agents that are so valuable in college hockey. And uh, oh. from top to bottom, this might be uh, the strongest our league has been since its uh, inception. And, and uh, you know, to say who's our biggest competition, we'll find out. I know, you know, as you say on paper, Michigan, uh, Michigan's it right now. Uh, but there are certainly some darn good teams. You know, Wisconsin's going to be right up there. 
you know, kind of playing off the great season they had last year. Uh, Notre Dame's always strong. Those guys just seem, uh, you know, they're always reloading there, and uh, it, it's going to be a fun year ahead for us. Uh, you you answered the you uh, entered the transfer portal, um, not heavily, but you got a good one in 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 Crookshank. Um, talk about his game a little bit, and and you know the experience, which is going to be helpful uh, to your team. I think the the experience is is huge. Uh, as you mentioned, um, a captain coming from Colorado College. Uh, we felt really good about our group, so we didn't want to rock the boat um, yeah. unless it was the right fit. And I think with Grant Crickshank, I think it's exactly the right fit. I think the reasons he chose Minnesota, because there were so many schools uh, that would have loved to have had him, but yeah. uh, he, didn't, he didn't come for the shiny toys and promise power play time. He wanted to come and be a part of our group, uh, be a part of our culture. He wanted to compete every day. Um, and he felt that if he did that, he felt that, you know, he could take his game to the next level and he wants to earn everything he's going to get. Um, and, and already just in, uh, you know, just being around him in the summer, uh, he's one of us and we feel really good about it. Uh, as Pat mentioned before, uh, Chaz Lucius also joining as a freshman, uh, first round draft pick from Winnipeg. Both, both you two know that the, the jump to college hockey is a pretty significant jump. So how as a coach, how do you project a guy of that skill level, especially given, kind of the injury marred season he had last year. How do you project how he's going to play for you, you know, right out of the gate? Yeah, we think he's going to do what he's done at every level uh, and he scores. He yeah. is an elite level goal scorer and, you know, he's one of the best in the world uh, in his age bracket, his draft year. Um, and he's just, you know, he's got the gift uh, and he just finds a way to put pucks in the back of the net. And we, uh, you know, we don't know if it'll come, you know, heavy and off and early, but uh, he's going to do that for our program before he leaves here for sure. Ben Meyer comes back, but he, he's a junior now, correct? Correct. Correct. Uh, you know, he, he's kind of Mr. Every, he's been kind of Mr. Everything for you. You know, you can trust him in your own end. He wins draws. He can play some power play. Um, the only thing that, that, you know, made him jump to that elite level was point production. Is that something that's in him? Can he do it? Are you expecting that out of him? I think if you go off a track record from Delano High School to the Fargo Force, uh, you know, I think in time, the points have all reached that that elite level. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, just knowing how hard he's worked, he's, he's had a tremendous summer. Now, you got to remember, these guys weren't able to have that summer a year ago. Right. Uh, just being around him, as Coach Mosco calls it, the eyeball test. He looks fantastic, and we sure are uh, we are sure anticipating him to have that big year this year. Yeah, and 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 you know, uh, I, I should I should have rephrased that a little bit. Is that part of the expectation? I mean, is that you know, is that a guy that you need or want to to be in that role? Absolutely, he's going to play, and you see him on a power play. He plays top minutes. Yeah, um, I think with that. Uh, if if we have the team that we believe we do and in, in, uh, the talent around him, I think uh, he has the ability to to reach to reach that next level uh, point wise. Garrett, you uh, had a successful career at St. Cloud State, played in Europe for a little bit after. Uh, you know, at what point did did coaching jump on your radar, and uh, do you have aspirations to be a head coach someday? Well, I think when I first <laughs> knew coaching might be in my future, I. Uh, I, I'm a coach's kid, so my father yeah. was a yeah. coach, um, and and then I and took he was a hell of a defenseman too. Well, that's what he tells me. Uh, <laughs> so he uh, so he kind of he kind of instilled that in me, and, and and then I think being an older college player, I didn't I didn't enter St. Cloud State till I was 21 years old, um, and then you know was a captain for for a few years there and worked you know worked closely with the staff as as all captains do um and then you know that was kind of the next that was the next step you know and and when i knew my career was coming to an end i wanted to come back uh, i was dying to get back into the college uh setup like you yeah. you don't know what you have until it's gone and pro hockey just wasn't for me i had to get back uh i had such a great time at st cloud state and uh and then coach gave me an opportunity and, you know, to answer the back end of your, of your question, 
you, one day, absolutely. Uh, but I'm having a tremendous time right now doing exactly what I'm doing. I think uh, to be able to work with the players uh, in the day to day, I love the recruiting side of things. Uh, you don't always get all that as a head coach from what I've seen. You don't, you don't get the relationship quite the same as a head coach as you do as an assistant coach. Well, um, I, well, I can, I can tell you this, and and uh, I don't think I've ever told you this, but w- one of the first times when I started doing St. Cloud games, uh, we didn't know each other very well, um, you know, probably high, high. And I said, you know, I, I was I was talking to Bob, and I said, you know, tell me about your assistants, whatever, you know, just the you know before the season. And he says, watch. Garrett Raboyne is going to be a star uh, as a coach and will be a head coach someday. And uh, I mean, to get that. And I was like, whoa, you know, um, that that's pretty high praise. So um, uh, I think you picked the right profession. <laughs> I appreciate that. It's pretty humbling. And uh, I, I'm so fortunate in my career and how it's gone up to this point and just, uh, you know, blessed to be where I'm at and, and, and truly loving it. Well, you mentioned your dad coached you. He coached you in high school. Uh, what is that? Ex- what was that experience like to be to be playing for your father? And then, what kind of traits as a coach did he have? Do you feel like that that you've carried over into your coaching career? Well, I mean, it was it was unique, and it wasn't always easy. Like uh, he's he's coach at the rink. He's he's dad on the ride home and in the house, and <laughs> the, the, the sometimes those lines were blurred. So it was uh, <laughs> it. it it wasn't always, but but looking back, it was some just special, like special moments to have between a father and a son. Uh, just him to instill the love of the game and and give me the opportunity to really uh, take hold in my own way and have my own career. Um, and just for him, just he's he's a he wears his heart on his sleeve as a coach, and he's always there for his players. He'd do anything for them, and he was always at the at the high school level. A lot of these guys don't go on to to play junior hockey even. And so he was all about instilling, uh, just being a better man, you know, uh, take lessons from the rink and, and put them to use out, uh, in the public and just being a better person, a better citizen. And that's, that's really what he was all about. And I, and, it, and that's with our guys too, ultimately, you know, we're teachers, we're educators. We just want to give our players a better opportunity, uh, and make them better human beings, help them in any way we can. Uh, final question for you, Garrett. When you were at St. Cloud State, um, did you have a level of hate for the University of Minnesota? And if so, what was it like then now coming to the dark side as a coach? <laughs> wow. Well, I think you are, you already know the answer. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, to put it lightly, I was competitive. Uh, yeah. And, and, and we, uh, and sure, we wanted to win those games. And uh, they were the biggest. Hey, they they were the biggest rival. There was nothing like showing up to whether it be 3M Arena or the Herb Brooks Center on a game day because you knew it was going to be packed and it was just electric. Um, and to leave the team I left at St. Cloud, I never ever would have in a million years thought I'd end up at the University of Minnesota, but I knew I had to come. Uh, it was just in my gut the right thing to do. Uh, and I love those players like crazy at St. Cloud State, but as soon as I got around the guys at Minnesota. I knew it was going to work. You know, they're not all that much different. Um, and now going into year four, it's the same thing. I love these guys like crazy. It's great. I love showing up to the rink, and and I'm all in here with these guys. Uh, I lied to you. One final question, Garrett. Uh, you know, last year I, I made the point to Pat that it was unfortunate out of all the years because, you know, let's face it, the, the program has struggled with a, with attendance compared to what it used to be over the last couple of years. And and obviously with the COVID restrictions last year, I told Pat, you know, it's unfortunate this of all years when this is, you know, this is a team on the rise. It was an entertaining team to watch. It was a fun brand of hockey that you get, you know, that you could have brought some energy back into that building last year. That being said, how, how great is it now this year to, to, to be able to have fans in the building with a team that you think has a chance to be pretty darn good? No, it's, it's, it's awesome. And we felt the energy last year, our attendance numbers uh, on TV, I guess, those tuning in were were as as high as they've ever been uh, in the history of our program. Is we know people are just waiting, waiting to come back in the rink, and, and there's going to be some momentum there. You saw the football game last week versus Ohio State. Like how great was that? I mean, it finally felt like we're back. The Minnesota fans are just 
waiting to come support their teams and, and we can't we can't wait to put on a show for them appreciate your time garrett really do and uh we'll uh hope for uh, much success for you guys this season awesome appreciate it guys all right thanks yep. garrett thanks Reboyne, the Take assistant care. coach for the university of minnesota men's hockey team <clears throat> and uh, by the way i should mention season tickets and all single game tickets on sale as of today the season opens yep. uh, against alaska fairbanks at three and marina mariucci on october 2nd through the third uh, the only odd date series on the schedule because uh, teams can't play before the second. Every other series is a Friday, Saturday. So good to have some fans back uh, at 3M uh, Arena and Mariucci. And Pat, I would like to talk before we uh, move on about uh, SodaStick.com. You can go to SodaStick.com to get your original Minnesota sports and spare goods. If you haven't seen this stuff yet, you got to check it out. One of my favorite designs is what I'm currently wearing, the Met hat. All of their apparel is uh, screen printed here in Minnesota on super soft, super comfy shirts. You will love it. And we're going to hook you up with 15% off your next order. Use the code KFAN for 15% off. That is sodastick.com, original Minnesota sports-inspired goods. Use the code KFAN for 15% off your next order. Pat, there's you know a lot to talk about, but since uh, Garrett was just joining us, yep. you have to be excited about Gopher Hockey going into the season. I know we, I'm kind of repeating what I said with the questions for him, but you know you have you know maybe the best goalie in hockey coming back. That's always great for a coaching staff. Uh, the defensemen were all great last year, and they were young. So now you have another year of experience on a great blue line. You've got your star power with you know Sammy Walker returning. You mentioned Ben Myers, who's can do everything and win faceoffs, and you know two hundred foot player can score big goals. You got a big time transfer coming in from Colorado College. You have a first round draft pick who's an elite scorer and Chaz Lucius coming up. Uh, I didn't even mention Blake McLaughlin. I mean, yeah, this team is you know obviously. You never know until you get into a season, Pat. There's a lot that has to do with chemistry and finding yep. right fits and working together and everyone playing their role and everyone pulling on the rope at the same time. But, uh, man, I mean, this, this team has the talent to uh, to make a deep run. Um, they do. You know, I, I, you know, I would look at it as, um, you know, from the cautious optimistic to very optimistic. However, that being said, you know, and, that, and that's why I brought up about Guys like McLaughlin and Walker and Meyer, they're your older guys now. They've been around, and and really, um, you know, I'll go I'll I'll go back to when I played. You know, we weren't going to win because of me and Corey Millen and 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 uh, Wally Chapman and Tony Kellen. Um, the, you know, the really good group of guys that we had. We were the freshmen. Uh, we were we were going to win because of Butsy Erickson, Scott Bukestad, Steve Griffith, uh, Dave Jensen, guys like that who were older, who had been there, um, and and uh, so you know you it's it, it's it's imperative that that guys like Walker McLaughlin and Meyer really step up on on the on the uh, forward lines um, because they're they're going to have to. You know they're going to have to be the ones at the end of the day, um, you know, carrying the mail. You 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 know, as good as the freshmen that they have coming in, it's it's really really hard. And uh, you get a tight game, you get the NCAA playoffs. Um, you know, it's a, it's a completely different animal. And um, n- not that they won't be able to, because you know everybody is different. But um, but those guys are going to have to be have to be the guys that that really lead i i think minnesota's um uh decor is the best in the nation um north dakota's right there with them with their d but uh you know when you've got johnson and lacombe and kester and and faber who probably faber could probably play in the national hockey league this season. yes he's yeah. that good um and then you had brinkman and and uh uh, a kid by the name of Fish uh, rounding out that top six. Um, it's it's awfully good, you know, and, and that's what they're going to rely on an awful lot. And you mentioned the Mankato game from the NCAA tournament uh, yep. with Garrett, and, you know, uh, we both watched it, Pat, and it was, you know, pretty a, a pretty thorough, dominating effort by Mankato. Um, you know, that as frustrating as that is for the program and, and not where you wanted to be, you wanted to go past that, I have to imagine that's a pretty good learning experience for a team, especially they had some some young talent on the team last year, and has probably been eating inside of them. And from from a motivating from a motivating factor going into next season, you know, you can turn that negative into a positive. Brandon, I don't know how many times you and I have talked about um, how one team plays into the hands of another team, and then 
They keep on trying the same thing over and over and over. And the clock keeps going down and down and down. And it is really, really hard, in my opinion, um, you know, unless you catch it, um, where you flip that switch and you change something that is going to alter the game. And Minnesota was unable to do that against uh, uh, Mankato in that game. And and the Mankato stuck to their game plan. Um, you know, it got at the end there, Minnesota put that push on. But, you know, it just uh, – it was a – textbook game um by mankato and and you know quite frankly they deserve to win that night all right pat let's uh, move on to uh we are going to have the olympics the nhl players yeah. are going to be in the olympics which there was some doubt and i'm i'm always a fan of uh as you like to say growing the game and yes. putting your, your best players in an international spotlight I, I love international hockey um you know just looking over some projected rosters from Ooh. all the different countries obviously canada is 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 stacked Yep, I I tell you what, seeing Kirill Kaprizov on that Russian roster, <laughs> with with all with the with the big names they yep. have there with Kucherov and Panarin and Ovechkin and Melkin and uh, you know I know their D line their their blue line is always a little suspect compared to other teams, but that, that I mean that that's some pretty good talent there in Russia. Sweden looks pretty deep and pretty good. Finland um, it will be really good. They always are. They never have the yep. names, but they always play a certain style. Yes. Uh, how do you evaluate what you think is going to be this United States roster? Well, I I I have my roster. I have. You've got your roster, okay? I, I've already I, got, I've, I've got I've, I've got I've, I've got close. Okay, I've got thirty five guys listed. I didn't go that much. I I went closer to just what your game day roster would be. But okay, um, I, we'll save our prediction about where they're going to finish till later. Okay. I I, I have mine, but. Um, I have 22 forwards, which probably has to get pared down to 13 or 14. I'm, so. a, I'm at 15 right now. Okay, I'm going to give you mine. All right. Well, well, before before you give your names, and I'll be I'll be curious to see what you do for names. I find it kind of interesting because we didn't they didn't have the Olympics last time, right? That, no. that was So the last time we saw you know the United States team in the Olympics, there's still a lot of those names that are playing in the league, but I, you know, a lot of them aren't going to make the roster. I don't None know, of them you know, will. They're, they're like the, the Parisis and the Suitors <laughs> and the Dustin Browns and uh, you know Pavelski and Kessel and uh, you know Jonathan Quick. Uh, maybe Quick makes it as a third goalie. I'm not sure, but no, um, no not on my list. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I only I only have two goalies down, so I'm, I I'm not sure four. what my th- I have okay. four. Okay. I All have right. I have Gibson Knight Hellebuck and Nadeljevic. Okay, I have okay. I, I have Gibson and Hellebuck, and obviously Spencer Knight. Uh, you know, maybe they yeah. want to bring the young guy so out and give him experience. Take, they'll take three. Now the decor is very very interesting, yes. and probably their strongest. Right, I have nine. Okay, I have Je- uh, Slavin or Slavin, however yep. you want to pronounce it. Warinsky, yep. Truba, Fox, McAvoy, John Carlson. Uh, McDonough and Alec Martinez. Any different than yours? Oh, I think you're missing two big names. What about Ooh. Seth Seth Jones? No, he's on there. Oh, I didn't hear you say yep. his name. Seth Jones. I said how about, Jones. How about Chikrin from Arizona? Um, that is that's the one I forgot. Yep. Uh, that is going to be an interesting one. Uh, do you take him over John Carlson? You know, will be the question. Yeah. On, from from an offensive standpoint. Where are we at with Varinsky? Because I know, like he he exploded onto the scene for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Has yep. his game has his game faded a little bit, or has he been the same as he was a couple of years ago? I, well, I, let's not. I think, um, I think he let Seth Jones be the guy in terms of offense and everything. I think he added more to his game, even though it didn't show up, you know, on, on the scoreboard. Um, you know he's the highest. He got more money than than Seth Jones did uh, in his yeah. contract. Um, he's a really, really, really good player, and I, you know, I I think you'll see a, a different player out of him this year. Um, I you know, I can't see him not being a lock. I'm glad you put Alec Martinez on there because you know he doesn't have maybe the the sexy game that some of these other guys have, but uh, I, I think guys like him are important especially in pressure situations. Yes. You need guys to kill penalties. You need guys to block shots. 
and you know he can provide offense too. Let's not act like he's just a defensive right. defenseman, but a guy who's had experience against top lines across. And I'm I'm glad you put him on there. We obviously saw a lot of him in the in the Wild Vegas Golden Knights series. Uh, forward position, I think there's about eight obvious guys, and then I think there's give me a your eight. Give me your eight obvious. Well, I mean, you know, Patrick Kane, Austin yep. Matthews, Jack yep. Eichel. Yeah. Uh, I know some people are down on him, but I'd still put Johnny Goudreau up there. No doubt. Uh, Max Pacioretty, even though he's up there in yes. age, I think he's still producing. Yep. Uh, and then and then I go with the one of us angle. I go with yep. uh, J- Jake Ensel. Yep. Uh, I think I think Blake Wheeler. Yep. And, and uh, Brock Besser. Hundred percent agree. So that's my eight. That's your eight. Okay, and, I'm gonna. And then, add... after, then after that, you have I think a lot of guys that could well, be shifted in, shifted. I've up. got I got both Kachuk's making it. Yes, I, I have both of them. Grit. Heart determination, bleed yeah. USA. I have both of them. Um, complain, I, uh, complain about them six type role for you too, and that. Yep, yeah. uh, and and that's what you get. And and we can look at oh, you know, 40, 50, 40, 40, 40, You know, goal scores. They can't have all those guys. So, I I've got Dylan Larkin shut down. Yes, I've got him center. too. Yep, I've got JT Miller automatic. Um, you know, just a grit guy. Loves to win. Wish we would have got him here in Minnesota. Um, but I, I, I really think he's going to make it. Um, and then, you, you know, the, the, the Kane to bring it um, combo, I really like. I, so I think to bring it is someone who's going to get an awfully hard look. Um, the guys on the bubble, I'll give you the guys on the bubble. And for, for me that, that they'd have to consider uh, Zegris, Trocheck. Troy Terry, um, Oshi, I yep. think, you know, um, oh, Osh- Oshi is an interesting one, Pat, because, uh, you know, l- let's face it with the, with the, with the way the NHL schedule this was this year, I didn't see TJ Oshi play a lot, yeah. right. I, um, because the wild never played them. Um, and he's getting up there a little bit in age. So I don't know if he's dropped off or he's the same, but clearly he's yeah, been yeah, great. Really he's been great in international here. competition. And yeah, uh, um, if, you get, if you get yourself in a shootout situation, he'd be nice to have. And then, and then you got a guy like Alex Tuck. Now, he I was may wondering if that ready. name was going to bring up. Yeah, he, he may not be ready because he, you know, he just. Uh, I think he's going to be out six months with that uh, shoulder problem that he had. So I, I would not, I would not probably, you know. Nice to have that. Him. Nice to have that speed on the big ring, though. Oh boy, would it, it, it! And then there's uh, the Rust kid from uh, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Who could be, you know, your fourth line guy, right? Um, if, if if that's what you're looking for, uh, you know, defensive type shutdown guy, you know, Tyler Johnson. I don't think he's going to make no, it. No, you know. Um, what about the uh, what about Cam the three- Atkinson from Philly? Now, I you know I've never I've never been a big fan of his, but you know they're going to take a look at him, and and you can't forget, and and yes, politics does play apart in some of these selections you've got um uh the head coach boston u assistant coach boston u um i'm not sure where heinz went to school um but regardless so you, you might have a little bit of that east coast flavor um you know i i don't know well it'll be interesting well, what about the uh, the three New York Islanders uh, you got Paul Mary uh, and then you got the two Minnesota boys Anders Lee and Brock Nelson I don't see uh, any of them making it. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I don't think the style of play in the Olympics is going to suit that. Sure. They're more NHL yep. style players. Yeah. Anders Lee's a great, and, and they're both great players and no disrespect to them. Yeah. Uh, you know, but they, but you know, uh, the, the smaller rink, the in front of the net, the behind the net, the winning, you know, the, some of those, ba- they're great. Right. Um, I, I just don't know if their game will translate to that style. All right. What do you think of this name? He's a guy who has had success in American international competition before. Still pretty young. Uh, already got paid. Um, maybe hasn't reached the star potential that you know, in the NHL, but he also hasn't been on the best team in the world. Clayton Keller. <sighs> team USA loved him and has loved him. Um I haven't really assessed his game to the point where, you know, they, they paid him, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
They did. Be a number one guy. And he hasn't really come, you know, really hit that level. Now, you know, maybe, maybe he will, you know, maybe he, you know, there's another Boston University guy. You know, those guys are familiar with him. They may like a certain part of his game that that fits for what they're trying to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's, he's gotta be, uh, he's gotta be on the list, no doubt. And, and, you know, one guy we're forgetting about too now, and, and, you know, the guy that everyone loves to hate, right. But all he does is doesn't get hurt is a point of game guy, um, played at the university of Minnesota, but Phil Kessel, right. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, 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 you know what? You may not wait like the way he looks, the way he, you know, um, whatever, but, but he does it every year and yep. he still has that, that, you know, eliteness to him that well, you got to consider. And let's face it, scoring has been an issue for Team USA over the years yeah. at the Olympics. And that's a guy who can score. He can score big goals for you. Yep. Uh, one final topic before we go, Pat, uh, the winter classic Minnesota wild jerseys, your thoughts. Well, I, I, I took the position a long time ago not to really be um, have a care factor about any type of jersey, any color. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that looks good. That looks. Good. I don't have an opinion. Yeah. Um, you know, th- listen. Um, I couldn't have designed it. Uh, I, you know, I just, I really don't. I, it, it didn't bother me. You know, no. good for them, and it's it's there. It, it it's one game. Enjoy it, and you know, I don't put. put well, yeah, I know. Yeah, pe- people like to go on Twitter and just complain like crazy. Oh my yeah. gosh! Yeah, I will say, Pat, like this this franchise doesn't have a history. So no. if, uh, the, the whole bit with Winter Classic is to get these all these throwback jerseys, and it makes it very challenging when you want to keep the Minnesota Wild brand, but then also do a throwback. I will say, you know, from a just pure aesthetic standpoint, I think it, it looks fine. Like yeah. I don't. Uh, the only thing I dislike is I don't like the patches on the elbows. I think that could go. But other than that, like I still think it's a good looking jersey. Is it like your is it your traditional throwback jerseys you've been seeing in the Winter Classic? No, but I really don't know if the Wild could pull that off just based off of if you want to keep the Wild brand, which I think they've proven they they're they're interested in doing. There's just there's not a lot of options there. No, not and and you know what? It'll give the fans an opportunity to buy one and keep one as a memento for you know for the game being played we probably won't get this game again for uh, you know for a long long time sure and and you, you know what have fun with it and i think that's what the wild is trying to do and they're you know trying to incorporate both cities um and and a little bit of the old school charm so i'm fine with it will Kirill kaprizov be signed by then that's the yes, question he well yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we both think that. I think we both have thought that. And, uh, you know, it, it's uh, it's going to be, ex- it, it, you know, a lot of people, Brandon, are, you know, again, you know, uh, as I mentioned to, to, to Garrett, um, you know, you can look at on paper throughout the league and say, oh, boy, they're loaded. They're the-. But ultimately, um, it doesn't matter because what it comes down to is are you fighting every night? Every team in the, in the National Hockey League is good. There's not a bad team. It's the best league in the world. Um, you know, you need breaks. You need guys to overachieve, um, and you guys, you need guys to to do what they've done before. And so, um, I, you know, I, 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 am I, um, am I, do I, am I really bothered by the fact that they didn't go out and get a number one center? Meh. Not, you know, yeah, it, it would be nice, but they don't. And, but what this team is, is turned into is a team that believes that it can win. And uh, so we just got to play it out and watch it and, and, uh, and see where it goes. Pat, great to talk to you as always. We'll chat with you next week. Can't wait. Thanks, Brandon. Right. He's Pat McAlady. I'm Brandon Molesky. This has been another episode of Beyond the Pod. Thanks to uh, Soda6.com for sponsoring. Use the code KFAN for 15% off your next order. We'll talk to you next week. Bye.